So we started investigating fraud in the addiction treatment industry several years ago. And there were a number of stories that came out of that. And there was a background, a sad background that kept coming out that we weren't really focusing on. And that was the numbers of people that were dying of overdoses just kept increasing, doubling, tripling. But it got to the point where I think it was in early, early 2015 where we started. We, we didn't know exactly what the project was going to do but we knew we needed to tell the story about the people that were dying because the numbers were staggering. Uh, and we just felt it was important to, I mean, we had read so many stories about statistics of the number of people dying, skyrocketing numbers, they were doubling, tripling. But I don't, I don't know that we had ever seen anything that, was, that really told who these people were. And we didn't really know who these people were until we started digging into medical examiner's records, police reports, reaching out to the families. And it was very emotional, even for the reporters, once, we, once you went from looking at the police report to looking uh, at who this person was, at a graduation picture, a wedding photo. These were, we, we, it was like a revelation for us. These were everyday people. These were our neighbors. These were retired law enforcement people attorneys, accountants, the captain of a high school football team, and they were all dying from heroin and opioid related overdoses. And uh, we felt it was important to tell their story, but more importantly, to use their faces, say their full names, and just so readers would see the impact of, of who these people were, that they were human beings, that they weren't the uh, stereotypical drug addict, that people think about is lurking in an alleyway or living under a bridge. That wasn't it at all. Well, I think, I think we came across the ethical hurdle almost immediately. You know, as soon as we started putting pictures that we were finding of these people who died on a whiteboard in what we call the white room, again, where the um, I-team meets and met on a regular basis. And you know, the question would be, um, you know, how are we how are we going to do this? And is is putting uh, you know is putting the faces out worth the anguish that we are going to create? I mean, there were families we talked to um, who had never told other loved ones that the person who had died um, had um, an addiction issue or who had died of heroin. You know, someone asked, what if my child reads this online? And, and so even though most of the people who we ultimately spoke with, most of the families who we ultimately spoke with, were very supportive of it, when those families who were not supportive spoke with us, their arguments were anguished and persuasive, and I can see, I, I think it's fair to say that it kind of tore us apart, really. And there was, you know, there was a lot of back and forth in the newsroom about what we should be doing, too. I think there was one editor who said, you know, why don't we just use 50 faces? Why don't, why do we have to use everybody? And, and you know, our, our ongoing justification was, well, we're going to do this for the greater good because we're going to do this, and then maybe the community will act. But there was no guarantee of that. You know, there was every likelihood that we were going to do something that was going to hurt a great many people and it was going to fall flat. So that was one issue. And I think what we did was we listened. We listened to each other, as we sometimes argued with each other. Um, we listened to the families and we sought some outside advice or input as well. Um, we spoke with a rabbi, for instance. We spoke to treatment counselors. We talked to people who were in recovery, and we reached out to um, an ethicist in journalism. And it wasn't as though we were asking them to make up our minds for us, but we were taking all of that into account. And, and as this went on, it seemed to continually sharpen our focus about what we were doing and why we were doing it. And it was so important, ultimately, that these faces, you know, be on the page because not only were we telling their individual story, by doing that, we were addressing the stigma that I think we had all agreed was really keeping people from seeking help and getting better. It was a long, messy, argumentative, and painful process. But, you know, I think when we finally published, we were all pretty certain of 
why we were doing what we were doing. I think the value of journalism in our society is its ability to promote change in the world. You know, a lot of investigative projects you will, you know, you will sweat over and you will go through it and at the end of the day nothing happens. Really what we were looking for with this project was change. We wanted to wake people up. And, and I think that is part of the, the responsibility of journalism in our society, is to illuminate. And I think that's what we were trying to do here.